How many of you guys have ever um, received an invitation in the mail to a wedding, party, graduation, something special, special event? You got some kind of invitation in the mail or a personal invitation, all right? And then how many of you guys have got excited about it, about that wedding that was coming, about that baby shower, about that graduation, about that special time, that special uh, celebration of the you're, you're celebrating the, the what God is doing or what the good thing that's happening in somebody's life. There's there's this joy and this excitement that that come over us, especially if it's an invitation to something good. Now if it's come on, all right. Nina says I was glad to be invited here. Amen, amen, amen. And so invitations are simple, but they're special, and especially when they are invitations to something special. And something great and something big. And Jesus likened the kingdom of God to be like this great banquet. And invitations had to go out. And people had to be invited. And people had to respond to that invitation to the kingdom. And so we're going to look at that. We're going to look at this parable that Jesus told in Luke chapter 14. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. And the big idea is simply this. God extends his invitations to participate in his kingdom through his people. And those invitations must go out to everyone with urgency and be accepted by the recipients. God extends his invitations to participate in his kingdom through his people. And those invitations must go out to everyone with urgency and be accepted by the recipients. Jesus got invited to a party. Okay, he got invited to a dinner by some religious leaders. Okay, he was hanging out with some guys, and in that in that party. So we're gonna we're gonna pick up on. He's already taught one lesson on humility in this text because he saw people trying to get the best seat in the party. Everybody's like, I'm gonna sit up here closer to the host. I'm gonna sit up here, and so he was like, this this is not the way of the kingdom, guys. So he teaches them the way of the kingdom is to take the low spot, to choose the spot that don't don't choose the high uh, prestigious spot. Take the low spot, and then you'll have honor when the host says, Hey, come sit up here. He says, Those who exalt himself will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. So he teaches the disciples a lesson about humility. Then he goes on and he teaches another lesson about hospitality. Verse 12, he says, and he said also to the man who had invited him. So now one, he's talking to the crowd, you know, hey, guys, don't don't jock for the best seats in the house. Don't exalt yourself because it'll be humbling if the host says, hey, you need to come sit over here because uh, I got so-and-so going to sit there. All right. So humility, lesson of humility. Now he's talking about hospitality. I mean, Jesus shows up at this party and he's he's correcting the the one who invited him, the host of the party. Verse 12. He also said to the man who invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers, or your relatives, or your rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection. This is cool. So Jesus first is given a lesson on humility and then given a lesson on hospitality. And and where he goes next, it may seem like disconnected, but I think it's connected because to, to respond to the invitation of the kingdom, we must come humbly to God and receive that invitation. And then when we become a part of the kingdom of God, we are going to have this heart for hospitality to reach out to the lost, the crippled, the lame, the outcast. We're going to reach out to them because that is the heart of God. That was, that was what Jesus was about. He was about the kingdom of God. He taught all about the kingdom of God. He brought the kingdom of God, and it's so different than the kingdoms of this world. The kingdom of God, it, the way up in the kingdom of God is down. The way to greatness in the kingdom of God is service. If you want to have life in the kingdom of God, you've got to die. Humble yourself. If you want to be exalted, humble yourself, and so on. And the list. If you want to be first, be last. 
All right, so Jesus lived like this. He left the glories of heaven, the comfort and the glories of heaven, and he came down to hang out with stinky people. He came down to hang out with people that were considered unlovely, undesirable. And the religious leaders gave him slack for it because he liked to go to the outcasts, to the tax collectors, to the sinners, to the people who know they really needed God. He was looking for that. And and Luke's gospel has a whole lot to say about that. God's heart for the poor, for the outcast, the down and out, the broken. Jesus said and, and when he started his ministry in Luke chapter 4, he quotes Isaiah 61. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. That, that's Jesus describing his mission and what he was about. So he, teaches, he gives a lesson on humility and on hospitality. Those are two other sermons, so I'm not going to spend any more time on that, but I'm going to move on. to When one of those who reclined at the table heard these things, he said to them, Blessed is everyone who will eat in, your, in, in the kingdom of God. So there was kind of this awkward moment because Jesus just like, he just like corrected the host. Like he's like, hey, don't invite the rich people because you're going you're, you're gonna to get – Repaid for that. Don't do. Don't invite folks just so that they can invite you back. What's it? That's not the way of the kingdom of God. Do good and lend to those hoping for nothing and return. Jesus taught in Luke chapter six. That's the way of the kingdom. We don't like. I'll scratch your back and you'll scratch my back. That's not a kingdom mentality. And that was the mentality of the Pharisees. You know, only invite the folks that you'll get benefit from by inviting them. Okay. And Jesus is like, no, you go invite. If you're gonna, if you got money and you can throw a banquet, invite the poor, invite the the, the crippled, and invite those who are lame, uh, the disabled, invite them in. Just imagine this for a moment, okay? I'm sure we've all been there. We we're in a conversation and something kind. Of, there's this awkward moment, you know. There's this tense moment, like, oh, what's going to happen next? And somebody just kind of says something to kind of lighten it up, you know. Just makes a comment. Let's just let's lighten it up. Hey guys, let's all just uh, you know have another soda or beer, whatever. I don't know. Uh, you know, somebody says something, makes a comment to just kind of lighten things up. Those peacemakers, right? The, or peacekeepers, peacekeepers actually. Um, and so this guy's like, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in your in the kingdom of God. And surely he was expecting because Jesus was about the kingdom of God. Surely he was expecting a uh, amen from Jesus. The kingdom of God, yes. But then Jesus has this story that he starts sharing with this guy in in, in front of these religious leaders, these prestigious people about the kingdom of God because there are a lot of folks like this guy who just assume they're in. They're in because they were born in the right family, Jewish family. They're in because they hang with the right crowd, the elite religious leaders, the, the Pharisees. Those who got their doctrine right, we're in. You know, blessed are those who kick it in your kingdom. Uh, and so he tells he tells a story about the kingdom. He gives a parable describing what the kingdom of God is like. But he said to the man, he said to him, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at that and at the time of the banquet, he sent out his servant to say to those who had been invited, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field. I must go and see it. Like, who doesn't go see the field before you buy it? Come on. Uh, Please have me excused. Another said, I have bought yoke of oxen. I have to go examine them. I mean, come on. I mean, you didn't look at them first, guy? I mean, they're going to be there. The field's going to be there. The oxen are going to be there. There's a banquet. There's a party. Don't you want to come to this party? No, I can't make it, man. Um... Please have an excuse. And another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. Come on, man. What wife doesn't want to get dressed up to go to a nice party and eat good food with prestigious people and have fun and fellowship, huh? All right. Wives like dinner parties. Is that not right? We had a ladies' night out the other night. They love dinner parties. All right. So these are lame excuses. Lame excuses. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. And then the master of the house became angry. And he said to his servant, go quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. 
And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there's room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and the hedges and compel the people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. The first thing I just want to highlight is that the kingdom of God is likened to a great banquet. So Jesus, in response to this man's comment about the kingdom, blessed are those who get to eat in your kingdom. It's likened to a bank- banquet. Isn't that cool? I mean, we, we like good food, right? We like, I, we're going to get to eat in heaven. And th- it's going to be good. I'm, sh- I'm sure it'll be like calorie free and you can eat and feast and enjoy. You don't have to worry about MSG and all that other stuff. It's going to be good for you. <laughs> Organic, healthy. Jesus likens the kingdom of God to this big banquet. There's this, this satisfying aspect of, of the kingdom of God. This is what we're made for. This is what satisfies our heart. The kingdom of God. And you are invited. You're invited to that. And so he likens the kingdom of God to this great banquet. And you know what? It does, the invitations don't just go out to the special people. They go out to the, the, those who the world considers unspecial, the marginalized, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the disabled. They go out to those people. And Jesus was about ministering to them. So so first point is this, is that the invitations must go out. Simple. They must go out. Go. He tells the servant, go. The invitations must go out. A man once gave a great banquet and invited many, and at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who have been invited, come, for now everything is ready. By the way, it wasn't as easy to throw a party back in the day like this, okay? First of all, they didn't have the Evites that we have, paperless, and all those great tools that we can use, MailChimp. They didn't have all those things that we can just conveniently send an email to them and then check the yes and no or maybe reply list or create a vent on Facebook. It wasn't as easy to do that. They couldn't just cater in some some tacos or some barbecue or something. They had to kill the animals. They had to catch the animals, kill the animals, prepare the animals. And so there were like all these moving pieces that were involved and so, like, when it's ready, it's ready, okay? Don't, don't be delaying. There is this sense of urgency. When the party's ready, there's an obligation to come if you're invited, especially if it's a big, special party. Uh, don't give no lame excuses about your oxen or your field or your, you just got married. Like, your wife will enjoy that, all right? So the invitations must go out. We must be about this. Jesus was about this. When you look at the Gospel of Luke, you see a man on a mission, The Son of Man, Jesus, who came to seek and save that which is lost. Luke 19.10. That's what Jesus was about. And then you see Jesus raising up disciples to live on mission with him, to follow him and live on mission with him. I love it. love it when it thunders when I'm preaching. (laughs) Pastor Mike was sharing 2 Corinthians 5 earlier. Be reconciled to God. I thought... That was great timing, Lord. Do it again. God is speaking. Come. It's ready. It's ready. The party's ready. Come. So the invitations must go out, and they must go out with a sense of urgency. Notice the verses. Come. Everything's now ready. Go quickly, verse 21, to the streets and the lanes. Verse 23, go to the highways and the hedges and compel them. To come in. Come on, guys. We got this party. I mean, I'm sure the guys on the highways and the hedges and those who normally don't get those invitations are probably like, are you for real? You want me to come to your party? And he's like, compel them to come in. Compel them. Invite them. A simple invitation to come and enjoy the feast. So they must go out with a sense of urgency. I was talking with, um, I was disappointed a little bit disappointed. I was delighted yet disappointed. I uh, had a divine appointment yesterday. We were out handing out invitations door to door in some in a neighborhood just right across Ferguson here. And I walk in uh, to this uh, garage. They, there were three Hispanic guys, and they got the garage door open. They got their beers, and they got this cool little dog um, sitting on the ground. And I'm like, go up and just making sure the dog doesn't come after me. And he's like, hey, come on in, man. Come on in, man. And, and uh, and so I go up and I start talking to him, 
and, and one of the guys is just totally receptive and, and just, I mean, he is like, he is very welcoming. The other guys are, they were kind of, I, I, I was, I couldn't read them, but um, this guy was, uh, he welcomed me in and he said, you know, uh, so I shared with them, started talking about God, invite them to the church. And uh, he told me, he said, you know, my, my kids, you know, they, they go to church and my wife and, and, you know, I just went to a funeral. I just went to a funeral a couple of weeks ago and I was, I was thinking, you know, um, when I die, I want my kids to think that I'm going to go to heaven. I want my kids. And I, I was like, well, you want more than just them to think that. You, you want to be there, all right? You want to be there for real and them have the assurance that you're there. But he was like, yeah, I want my kids to think that I'm going to heaven. And, and so God was working in his heart. He was just thinking about death and life and eternity, just a couple of weeks ago, he's at a funeral, and funerals have a way of doing that and in a good, healthy way. We need that reminder that that's going to be us one day. So we should live in a way that really matters now and be prepared for when that is us one day. Yeah, so I was able to share the gospel with him. I invited him, but I, I didn't have a sense of urgency. I was disappointed in that because was, it was like it seemed like this guy was ripe and ready, and he's right there. And I just thought, man, I need to have a sense of urgency with this guy. What if he doesn't make it till tomorrow? You know, who knows? And so I need to have a sense of urgency. Jesus had this sense of urgency. The Apostle Paul had this sense of urgency. He said, today is the day of salvation. We, we um, implore you, be reconciled to God. God pleads through his people saying, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled. And so we need a sense of urgency. When we have an eternal perspective, we're going to have a sense of urgency. Jesus had it. The disciples had it. Tomorrow's not promised to us here. And so we want to compel people to come into the kingdom. And this is for their good. This is for the good. And by the way, when you sent, give out an invitation to the church, I just want you all to, to, to think about this. This is more than just the invitation to come here. That's that's great. We would love for lots of folks to come here. That's awesome. But what's even more important is that they get an invitation to the kingdom and that right there on their doorstep, they can meet Jesus right there in the store where you invite them. They can meet Jesus. They can respond to the invitation to the kingdom of God to come and follow Jesus. God is working in people's lives. He's stirring people's hearts. And we get the joy and the privilege of being his UPS man or his mailman and delivering the messages out. So the invitations must go out with a sense of urgency. One uh, commentator says this about the parable. It says, the essential points in this teaching are that no man can enter the kingdom of God without the invitation of God. And that no man can remain outside of it but by his own deliberate choice. Man cannot save himself. It is this latter act, this latter fact that makes the preaching of Jesus so urgent. Okay, God has chosen to use our invitations, our extensions, our message of the kingdom, of the gospel to people who aren't living for him. So the other thing is that the invitations must go out to everyone, okay, not just... Not just the, uh, the the prestigious. Actually, I found that it's it's more difficult. Those who have lots of means, wealth, and have high position in society and authority, and 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 they they're, they're successful in the world's eyes. It's it's challenging to invite those folks because because you you will experience a lot of rejection and you will feel. I mean, I know I have felt just humbled many times trying to invite somebody who has no sense that they need God or go to church, all right? But this, this Jesus in this parable says, he's t basically saying, go out to everybody. The message needs to go out to the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. And you know what? It's, it's these folks that tend to have more of a recognition that they need God, right? Some folks say they won't come to God because they, they don't need a crutch. They don't need a crutch in life. Well, you know what? We need a lot more than a crutch. We need a Savior because we are sinners and we have broken the law of God and only Jesus can save us. And so the invitation must go out to everybody. We don't, we don't get to pick and choose who we're going to give it to, all right? We need to have this unbiased, un, uh, no, 
no racism in our heart, no, um, no whatever-isms in our heart that would keep us from inviting certain types of people. We should cross those barriers to invite all kinds of people, regardless of how old, how young, whatever the gem- gender, all right, whatever the philosophies. I mean, we, we should reach across those, those barriers to invite, to compel, to invite people to be a part of the kingdom of God. The invitations must go out to everyone, and lastly, they must go out through the people of God. I think it's amazing that God has chosen to use you and I, that we, we get a part in this. As I said last week, talking about becoming a fisher of men, Jesus tells Peter, cast your net into the boat, or out of the boat, into the deep, and c- catch the fish. Jesus could have just told all the fish, hey, jump in the boat. Jesus could have made all those fish jump in the boat and sink the boat. <laughs> I mean, there were so many fish, but he chose to use Peter casting the net out into the deep and then and then them having to signal with their partners, hey, we need some help because we can't carry all these ourselves. Okay, God has chosen to use you and I, his people, to get the invitations out. And what a joy it is. This is one of the greatest joys you could ever experience after knowing Jesus, coming to Jesus and knowing Jesus. This is one of the greatest joys you can ever experience in your Christian walk. And that is introducing somebody to Jesus and helping them be all that God saved them and created them to be. John says, I have no greater joy than my children walk in truth. All right? There is great joy and satisfaction. And being able to introduce somebody who is your treasure, who is your savior, who is so good and so kind. And if we make ourselves available to God, he will use us. I I shared with uh, many of you guys on, uh, on Friday, my kids and I were coming back from the park and, and, uh, my son was in the back crying and grieving about his lost Lego piece at the park. We looked for it. And I was like, I was getting irritated because it was like, it wasn't even a Lego man. It was just like the shield on the mask. It was like a tiny, tiny piece of plastic that had such a strong grip on my son's heart that he was crying so many tears over this piece of plastic that means nothing. It's really nothing. And so I'm trying to teach my kids not to make idols out of their toys. Jesus is better than Legos. He won't break your heart. You're not going to lose Jesus, and he's not going to lose you, all right? And so I'm trying to teach my kids this lesson, and so we're driving back, and I'm, you know, a little bit irritated by by my son's grief over uh, the Lego piece. And so I see a lady uh, just a block from my house, and so I pull over. I got my kids in the back, and I give her an invitation to the Easter service, and I said, how can I pray for you? And she said, I'm a drug addict. I mean, just straight out. She, she was she very transparent, very raw and real and honest. I'm a drug addict, so that's how you can pray for me. <laughs> and and so we start talking. We start talking, and then she asked me for a ride. She needs to get you know a couple mile a mile or a couple miles away. So we start talking. She asked for a ride. I'm like, this is kind of risky. One, I don't usually pick up ladies that I don't know and give them a ride. <laughs> and then my kids are in the back. You know, she's gonna drop some f bombs or I don't know. Does she have any paraphernalia on? I don't know. So anyway, those kind of thoughts are going on in the back of my mind, but it it really seemed like a divine appointment, like God was in that. So I said, okay, sure. So we got in, and I listened a little bit more of her story. By the way, she was older. She has a son that's, like, older than I am and a sweet lady, and I could tell she she had a lot of pain and grief in her heart and her life. And um, so she's sharing a little bit, and then we get to her her apartments in – and then I start sharing the gospel with her. And I, I use the bracelet that I have here to go through Romans 3.23, 6.23, Romans 5, 8, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And just share with her some simple gospel truths. And, and share with her how Jesus loves her and is, is willing to accept her as she is. She doesn't have to get cleaned up and then come to Jesus. A lot of folks think that. They're like, I just got to stop using drugs and then I'll go to church so I can be presentable. But Jesus is like, no, you come as you are. I'll take you just as you are. And by the way, we're a church that, that receives people just as they are. Whoever they are, however they are, come as you are, and we'll let Jesus do the cleaning up. All right? 
And so we want to love on folks that come in and feel ashamed and broken and feel unworthy to even be in church, all right? So we want to create an atmosphere of hospitality, love, and grace in this place, all right? And so anyways, I was able to share with her, and I was able, and I can see as I was sharing, I could see hope arising within her. And I started to see a little bit of a smile, and I got to pray a prayer of faith over her. That God would break that addiction in her life. And, and she said, you know what? She said, I think this was meant to be. You know, I was on my way to the drug house, and they weren't home. I'm going to go get me a soda. You know? <laughs> and so it was like, yes, that was meant to be. God wants you to be in the kingdom, and you just got an invitation. Come, come. So we should have this sense of urgency in inviting people in. God is doing so much. He's at work, and we can partner with what he's doing, join in with what he's doing in people's life. I love the quote by Henry Blackaby. He says, find out where God is working and join him. Find out. God's working in people's lives. The harvest is ripe. People are ready. There, there are many people out there that are just waiting for somebody to tell them about the Lord. As I said a couple weeks ago, a lady at Gable Point Apartments, she said, um, she said I've been waiting for somebody to invite me to church. Um, well, so, so check this out. So Jesus was sent out by the Father and the Spirit. He says, as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. So he, sent his, he was sent by the Father as like a missionary to earth. Okay? Uh, he was on mission. And then, he, you know, he, claim, he, he declares his ministry was about uh, proclaiming the gospel to the poor. The Spirit of the Lord anointed him and sent him to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So Jesus was sent, and then he raised up some disciples who were sent, 12 of them, okay? He did, he modeled for them what he was about, and then he sent them out. He said, okay, now you guys could do this. your turn. All right, go preach the kingdom of God. Go heal the sick. He sent them out. Go cast out demons. You guys go do that. It's your turn. Oh, no, here we go. It's a little scary, a little risky. All right, they went. They were excited. And then, you know, there's these other 70 folks, too, that, that Jesus sends out these 70 disciples. Okay? And they went. And, and Jesus even says this, that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray earnestly that the Lord of the harvest would send out labors into the harvest. We need to pray this. This is a kingdom prayer right here. The labors are few. So pray that God would send them out. He says, go your way. Behold, I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. Who wants that mission? You're going to be the lamb. You're going to go among, among a bunch of wolves. Go for it. Ready? Go. Sammy says, I'll do it. Yeah. Come on, Sammy. Uh, so that's, that's what it's like. But you know what? God is with us. We don't go by ourselves. He's with us. He's in this. If you want to experience God in a, in a deeper way and experience different aspects of who God is, go out with him fishing. All right? You get to see God in action, working. My kids were in the back seat with this, this lady in, in our front seat who was a drug addict, who needed hope, who needed Jesus, and they got to hear the whole conversation. And they're quiet. They're just like observing their little eyes. You know, they're wondering what's going on. Who's this lady? And they got to experience God at work in this lady's life. I want my kids to not only see dad in a, that, that light of being on mission. I want them to see God, their heavenly father, on mission, saving people, reaching people. Amen? So God, Jesus was sent out. He sent out disciples. And you know what? He sends us out too. The party's ready. The kingdom's ready. The, the kingdom is here. Jesus came preaching it. Repent. The kingdom of God is here. Okay? Go. He was inviting people to come. Next thing is that the invitations of the kingdom must be received. So there's, there's, this, is, this is two-sided. It's multi-sided, actually. This is more than just us getting the invitation out. Folks got to receive it. And so when you, when you go out, you can expect to hear excuses, lame excuses. I got to wash my car tomorrow morning. Sunday morning, you know, I, I got to uh, I got to go get my nails done. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of excuses that we can give that show us really what our priorities are. But Jesus calls his people to be about the kingdom of God and to prioritize the kingdom of God. OK, and, and by the way, church folks can give these excuses, too, for not participating and giving out the invitations. All right. I'm going to step on somebody's toes over here. All right. Uh, and so excuses 
Uh, Don't get discouraged when you hear excuses. I've heard so many people say, I'm going to come to church or or give me excuses why they're not going to come to church. And don't get discouraged. You know what? There are some people that are, at some point, they're going to receive the invitation. They're going to come and they're going to get the feast in the kingdom of God for all eternity, partly because you gave an invitation to them. All right? That's just awesome to me. So they all begin to make excuses. I bought a field. I got some oxen. I just got married. Um, none of those excuses excuses are are uh, worthy of missing out on the kingdom. So the, the problem is people don't see the value in the kingdom. They don't feel the weight of the kingdom of God, how important it is and how urgent it is that they are right with God, with the king of kings. So the invitations must be received. You can expect to hear excuses. You can expect to be rejected. And this is why this is why we don't like to go give personal invitations. I'll do the email. I'll do the Facebook one. But go go and ask somebody face to face. They might tell me no. They might make fun of me. They might they might rip it up in front of me. I've had that happen many times. They rip up the gospel track right in front of me. <laughs> You know, it doesn't feel good. My little feelings get hurt. But who cares? It's not about me. And you know what? You can't take it personal. You can't. if Because ultimately, they're not rejecting you. Ultimately, it's God that they're rejecting. You see, they're, they're missing out. They're the ones missing out on the kingdom of God. Okay? Jesus told the, the 70 this when, when he sent them out. He said, The one who hears you hears me. The one who rejects you rejects me. And the one who rejects me rejects the one who sent me. So ultimately, the rejection goes back to God. If you're there as an ambassador of Christ, representing God, trying to help somebody, inviting somebody to a feast that they don't have to pay for, they don't need tickets, they can just come, the invitation is given, and they reject you, uh, know that ultimately they're rejecting God. So don't take it personal. And you know what? Jesus wept over the rejection of, sal- of the invitation of salvation that he gave. Jerusalem and Israel rejected. He came to his very own people. He was the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah, the hope, the one who could change and deliver, change their circumstances, deliver them from their enemies. And they rejected him, and he wept over. This is one of the few things that were told in the Gospels that Jesus wept about. He uh, Luke 13, it says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her, her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. The invitations have to be accepted. Luke 19, 41 through 44, And he drew near and saw the city, and he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground and you and your children within you and they will not leave one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation some folks just don't know and recognize the importance of the invitation some folks are are just unwilling and and don't value the invitation and don't value the kingdom of god this is the heart of god so what linda scott was just expressing earlier about this this guy richard that we prayed for was the heart of jesus This is how he feels towards those who don't believe and those who reject him. So don't take it personally when when you're the one that's that's in their face and they turn you away. They shut the door on you or they cuss you out. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad because your name is written in heaven. That's what they did to the prophets. That's what they did to Jesus. They treated him like that. They, the, the prophets and Jesus, they came to help. They came to bring a message of hope and deliverance. And they spurned it. They rejected. You're in good company if that happens to you. Jesus calls you blessed if that happens to you. That's the kind of blessed life folks ain't looking for, though. Right? But that's the blessed life of the kingdom. And so the invitations of the kingdom must be received. You can expect inconvenience. Last thing there. Don't get comfortable. I know them chairs are comfortable right there. Don't get comfortable. The kingdom of God is not about comfort. There is nothing comfortable about carrying a cross. Nothing at all. 
comfortable about carrying a cross. Okay, so we will inconvenience other people. Them responding to the invitation to be a part of the kingdom will be an inconvenience to whatever they have going on. Whatever their priorities and values are that are not kingdom-based will be an inconvenience. Okay, And it will be inconvenient for us to be the ones to go out and take time out of our family time or our whatever time and, and, and go out on movie time, our entertainment time. We're going to go invite some folks to Jesus. It, that, that, that's an inconvenience. It's an inconvenience for the person who's receiving it. It's an inconvenience for us to feel that awkward rejection and, and hear excuses. But it's worth it. And Jesus calls his followers to this. So the second part of Luke, the very end there of Luke, Jesus talks about the cost of discipleship. Kevin next week is going to hit on this, this concept a little bit more, the, the, the discipleship uh, concept. But Jesus says, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Uh, verse 33, so therefore any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. One must not only accept an invitation to the kingdom of God, they must also abandon everything and make themselves available to God. Making yourself available to God and abandoning everything to follow Christ can be very challenging, uncomfortable, inconvenient. There's nothing convenient about carrying a cross, an instrument of death. Jesus carried it for us, and he calls us to live our lives carrying a cross. It's the way of Christ. So I'm going to land the plane here. Accept the invitation to the kingdom if you haven't already. And don't assume that you're in the kingdom if you're not truly following Jesus. Like the Pharisees and this guy who makes this statement, blessed are those who get to eat in your kingdom. Assuming that he's in. I'm in there. Blessed is everyone who's going to be in there with us, right, Jesus? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't just assume that, that you're in because you're Jewish and because you're a part of the Pharisees. All right? You've got to accept the invitation. I'm the only way, Jesus said. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He is the only way to get in. He is the king of the kingdom. You can't get in without accepting him and his invitation. And so if there's anybody here today who hasn't yet responded to that invitation, I invite you. God invites you to come and participate. Be a part of his kingdom. Come and feast. You who have no money, come, buy, and eat, and drink. Come to the waters and drink. And those of us who have accepted the invitation and we're part of the kingdom, we know Jesus, we love Jesus, let's participate in the Easter challenge. Let's go invite 25, at least 25 folks and and friends and family and and especially folks who don't go to church and invite them to come and, and hear about the one who conquered death for them, for us. And then prioritize, lastly, prioritize the kingdom of God over your personal comforts and convenience by taking time out of each day to invite non-Christians to Christ the King. When you're at, at lunch this afternoon and you're about to bite into your big juicy burger and fries and you sense the Holy Spirit wanting you to talk to the waitress or waiter, that's going to be an inconvenience, a little bit uncomfortable because you're ready to dig into your food, right? All right, there's going to be times where God calls us out of our comfort, calls us to deny ourselves and to reach out. Amen. So there's nothing convenient about evangelism and sharing that message. If we wait for a convenient time to evangelize, we will rarely do it because there's there's rarely a time convenient time to do so. So if you guys would bow with me in prayer, prayer, I want to pray into this and father. I thank you that you have invited us to the feast and that we can find our hearts satisfied and fulfilled with all that you have for us in Christ. I thank you that that invitation has gone out and many here have received and responded to that invitation and are following you. And God, I pray that we would also be on mission with you as we follow you that we would get the invitations out that we would introduce people to you that we would let them know 
about the one who loved them and died for them and rose for them and conquered death for them. I pray that this message would burn within us, God, that you would stir a passion in us to reach those who don't yet know you. Could you just ask God to give you his heart, his heart for the lost, his heart for people that are marginalized, neglected, hurting. They're all around us. It's hard for people who are blinded, spiritually blind by the enemy who don't believe because the enemy has blinded them. God, would you give us your heart for them? May the love of Christ compel us to compel them. May the love of Christ move us. May compassion move us to take action on their behalf. To try to help them. Share with them. To risk being rejected. To risk awkwardness. To risk hearing excuses. To risk our reputation and our comfort. So that we can have the joy 